Smoke deflectors are a striking feature of many modern steam locomotives, and on some have even reached icon status. But what do they actually do? And how do they do that? For most of the 19th century, locomotives reached only moderate speeds and boilers were small compared to the overloading gauge, allowing for tall chimneys and with an excellent draft, exhausting steam and smoke at a great velocity. But already with the late 19th century express locomotives, the Prussian S3 with its original top speed set at 90 km per hour being one of them, crews started complaining about smoke interfering with their vision. A problem which was only about to become increasingly urgent, with the locomotives becoming faster, more powerful and more efficient. At lower speeds, the exhaust smoke is pushed out with enough upwards force to easily clear the crew's field of view. But the faster a locomotive goes, the more vigorous the smoke is dispersed and pushed backwards by the air. If that happens before the smoke gains sufficient height, it shrouds the boiler and cap, blocking the crew's view. As an increase in power often also meant an increase in boiler diameter, the available height for the chimney decreased, amplifying this problem even further. As did modern exhaust systems. A strong draft through a narrow chimney is beneficial for steam production, but also creates significant back pressure in the cylinders as the exhaust steam can't escape quickly enough, reducing the locomotive's efficiency drastically. Therefore the large diameter or even double chimneys on many modern steam locomotives, decreasing the exhaust's velocity. The solution German engineers found after countless trials and mostly errors was surprisingly simple. Two steel plates besides the smoke box, one on each side. The purpose of them is to stabilize the airflow around the boiler at high speeds, earning them the analytical name Windleitbleche, literally wind rooting plates. In contrast to the turbulences caused by a locomotive without them, they create a channel of flowing air around the boiler acts as a barrier the exhaust smoke and steam can't cross, keeping it far above the locomotive and right out of the crew's sight. Which leads to the English term smoke deflectors describing the effect rather than the mechanism. The first smoke deflectors fitted on German locomotives in the mid-1920s were fairly small and simple in their shape, but as such proved insufficient as locomotives kept growing, leading to the much larger smoke deflectors commonly found on the standards. While various types were also trialed on goods locomotives, was it initially decided against them? The lower speeds didn't make them necessary. However, this changed in the late 1930s when the Deutsche Reichsbahn introduced fast-running goods locomotives with a top speed of 90 km per hour. But rather than speeding up goods traffic, the government's priorities were set on starting a war. And with the introduction of the wartime locomotives in 1942, smoke deflectors were seen as an unnecessary feature driving up production cost. But as omitting them entirely backfired, were simple plates fitted instead towards the top of the boiler. Initially flat, then angled, and finally curved, these new smoke deflectors were through their positioning more effective despite being much lighter and cheaper to produce, and as such became the standard in both parts of Germany after the war, with the West German Bundesbahn being particularly keen in replacing the old Wagner type smoke deflectors with the new Witte type ones. The East German Reichsbahn on the other hand also fitted some of the slower locomotives with smoke deflectors when the harsh wind of the Baltic Sea messing with the exhaust smoke made them necessary. If you're enjoying my videos, why not consider becoming a channel member like all these awesome people including Contrian, Dan Manden, Dave Heise, Getter, K. Frankly, Lukas Ilskens, Macan1220, Manus Moba, Martin Zoutan Vigikan, Michael Beck, SGG Scuba, Sören Dominik Cook, Steamy Player and Void Elder already dead.